All right. So how is the world better off because your company is in it? Um, that's what we're going to speak, think, and actually sleep today with that question in our minds. And um, my name is Laura. I'm the founder of the Holistic Enterprise and newly we just established the Holistic Business University where we are literally changing the world. We're truly, truly, fiercely brave leaders who are dear to speak about business practices that are yet taboo and not written in any type of business books. So you'll be able to tap in some of those most kind of important knowledge right now. Uh, when I started preparing for this conference, I thought, where is then the quality of my work? Um, and where it begins. I was always very sure where it ends, but then where does that start? Um, and working in Central Europe, Scandinavia, and the Middle East, together with Vilma, uh, we'd been in more than 40 industries, and there was simply this question that was niggling us from inside. We saw the pattern of silos. We saw the pattern of separateness, of fragmentation that was increasing VUCA, that was increasing actually um, driving soul, soulless organizations forward, where we would step in any type of industry, doesn't matter how many people there would be, 55,000, they would still have the same boring, meaningless targets and goals. And we can take any type of industry, you can open up the strategies and you probably see something like that. I will not go through all of this. And at the same time, if you will want to look at their whole system, how do they play together? How do they produce massive impact and value? All of these things wouldn't matter at all. Sorry, guys. Because at the end of the day, all of these people, they truly want to do their good, but they are trapped. They are trapped in, separa in separateness, in fragmentation. They're trapped in silos. And if we speak about the quality, you know better than anyone else uh, here today. Anytime you are bringing the complaints or the failure demand to your organization and you are asking, would you mind digging into the root cause? You know, probably someone is going to say, I'm too busy and that's that's your job, right? And the sales probably have as well uh, another angle to the marketing saying, your jo my job is to sell, your job is to provide qualified leads. So whatever we would be going, we would be hearing a very, very strong I and very little of we. And nevertheless, in any type of organization on the walls and on their you know, yearly kind of uh, big uh, events, they would be proudly talking about the values. And there was a moment when I was sitting with Vilma and I was saying, I cannot live this lie. As a transformational consultant, I can't continue doing what I do. For 10 plus years, we believed with Vilma that our work quality work must result in that we are stepping into any type of organization and kissing fully goodbye to the silo mentality. As I say, it doesn't matter, you know, top down, bottom up, it's still egocentric and we don't want that. But it was not good enough for us. Uh, we read, I don't know how many books, we've studied all over the world we done dissertations. Vilma got her PhD in holistic risk management. For the last 12 years, we've been digging and digging and digging. Uh, and no matter where we went, you know, we would be still uh, realizing the same patterns. We just couldn't unearth the answers of the reasons why still, despite gifted CEOs and teams, as we all are here, we know that our business is an interacting living system. And we never have an illusion that moving boxes, structures around in the org chart or cascading down targets, more or less arbitrary KPIs, will improve the bottom results of the whole system. We know that, you do. So why on earth we still are falling into this old pattern of thinking in separateness? 
So silo mentality is actually deeply ingrained in our memory. It goes back hundreds of years ago. It doesn't show the whole picture. It restricts information flow and timely decisions. It limits our growth. It creates walls and it serves the holy grail that is called the budget or all of these strategic um, arbitrary targets that once I've showed. It doesn't include your clients. It doesn't include your suppliers. It leaves you heartless left, but the values, fake ones on the wall. So the top-down thinking, guys, is really dangerous. It makes us think small. It is a death to your audacious dreams, and it kills the soul and essence, not only of your business, but it kills the essence of you. So we sat down with Vilma in 2019, just before the COVID and we hit the rock bottom saying that either we are going to completely redefine the paradigm of how businesses can be grown. But for doing that, we have to become different people. I mean, because we've been blueprinted as well to manage companies as separate parts. So we thought, is there a way to ascend beyond that linear thinking and shift from I to we and truly play big? And when I say play big, it's not only words. It's the feeling in your body, the energy, the vibration, the soul alignment you have when you know that there are no walls, there are no limits to reach whatever you want, because you know. The impact you're going for is far beyond bigger than your ego. It is bigger than your life. So we thought how about the quality, right? So how can we then step into organizations and more importantly, step into the leaders' mindsets way before they know a word silo mentality? How can we make sure that we are you know, creating this new paradigm so this is what we thought. Let's, because um, uh, we have to become someone different. We have to really, really as well play big. So let's go for the world record. And we did. Sorry, guys, my mouse is all over. So we thought, what if we could find that 1% of um, truly brave and audaciously thinking impact-led CEOs on the planet without any money, any advertising, simply two of us stepping into the LinkedIn. I'm a single mom living in Klaipeda. I have no possibilities to travel. I made a choice to work remotely and we do that for another three years since COVID. But we said, let's be really, really brave. And if we want to speak with these people, if we want to understand what are those nonlinear practices they do, where do they find energy? We have to become the same kind of humans. So what we've done this spring, we found these people and we found them in the extreme excellence world record. Uh, we decided to go with our communication, really, really fiercely brave. Uh, English was our, I don't know, it's my whatever, third, fourth language, Vilma second. It was really, really um it was growing us from like the bottom of our core because we needed to find people. We didn't have any process because once you say you go for the world record, you communicate that out. You have zero clarity what you're going to do, how you're going to do anything. What is the you know stages of certain um, uh, processes? What's the journey? You don't have anything. So you just simply create every minute. Um so today I'll show you a little movie uh, of how, uh, what does it look like and what does that embody? And then we can talk about those taboo practices that I can truly assure you that none of the lean books, none of the quality books, none of the uh, systems thinking books, yes, but maybe some other management books speak about. And tell me if you hear the sound. The war in Ukraine truly made me think, what is the biggest thing I can do? How can I influence everyone else to really stand tall and say no to any type of dictatorship? And one of the reasons why I went for this world record, even though it was done in my second language, 
it was this. I want to speak to the biggest and boldest people on the planet. We have to change the story. What are the things we all believe that aren't true? I've always had an, had an ambition to, let's say, to improve the world. I'm really very much touched that I, I got this opportunity to be part. We've chosen CEOs to participate. How is the world better off because your company is in it? Um. Huh. It takes one brave soul to start the change. It truly really takes one who is so audaciously crazy that they do not even question the surroundings they are at. They do not even question if they're gonna be rejected by the board, if they're gonna lose clients, if they're gonna lose the job. They are just so anchored to something far beyond bigger than their lifetime and they're going for that. There is another side of the corporate. There are a lot of rules that nobody really follows and believes. I started to realize that every chronic disease can actually be prevented. What other problems can we solve? We have to be always authentic. Why did we ever define an organization whose goal is to undermine the well-being of some groups to create well-being for others? You know, think about what we're saying. One of the aims of the world record was to gather the best business practices those brave and vulnerable leaders do. Bringing that piece of wisdom to the world will raise the standards for everyone uh, today to make the world an even better place. Business isn't going to thrive unless society's thriving, unless the planet's thriving. If you don't have a purpose, what's your purpose? You know, if you don't have a reason for being, why are you here? It doesn't matter where you come from, it's not your surroundings that define you. You can create your own narrative, your own story. So that truly made me become a different person. Okay. So those four patterns, they all had in common. And by the way, it was around 26, yeah, 26 countries in total within uh, six weeks. Um, so there's four of them that are truly audaciously brave and it's kind of spooky to speak about them, even if you come back to your CEO, but, um, but you can think how you can actually embrace those, uh, to become bigger as human beings. So first of all, it is to ignore the competition and truly think big, focus on the business um, focus the business on kind of solving the biggest problems humanity face today and to raise highly uncomfortable and bold questions, embrace healing and recovery from ego-driven growth. And you would probably not very often hear the CEO speaking in his meetings that he has to heal and recover together with his team from wearing the crown and thinking I. But we had those CEOs in a world record who spoke vividly about soul and about proper inner work and build the collective consciousness in the meetings. And I guess one of our guests, he spoke about that too, about building that um, collective energy and collective um, truth uh, where we are not lying to ourselves anymore and bringing soul and whole into the business. And it's easier said than done, but let's take a look at some of them. So Naveen Jain, who is a billionaire, a CEO of Viam, he asked himself the question before he actually uh, created Viam, what if chronic disease was a choice, not a consequence? And think about that question. Very often, before we start the company, so when we step as a leader or any type of CEO in a company, we think of what? We think of the bottom line and the structure. And that is absolutely wrong in his eyes. He is saying that we have to tap into our biggest why and truly, truly have space and carve out time as the leaders, as the experts, as humans being, human beings to ask ourselves really, really bold questions. What if chronic disease was a choice, not a consequence? And how the future healthcare 
could look like if suddenly we wouldn't have a need to have hospitals. You know, when we think from that angle, and if we dare to weave that impact, mission, vision, purpose, whatever we call it, in all our processes and in all our structures, that's what is holistic empire. Anana Yi here, she's the um, the co-founder of vertical um, of vertical harvest farms. Um, and they're operating in USA and Europe. Her brother has a disability. So what she created in the vertical harvest farms, a lot of um, like a business model where people with disabilities can step in and work on the same level and be the same efficient. So she is saying that the bigger problems we solve as business, the easier it is to attract talents, clients, and investors. So we are growing healthy food and futures in urban communities and their impact. You can only read, actually look at the keywords. You don't have to look at the entire sentences to understand the impact is to develop a network of farms. And when we already think network, we're opening up our minds. We're opening up our souls, you know, we're extending our arms and actually linking arms with working with each other rather than having this separateness in solving biggest problems. Now, Alex Blumentelis, Latvian fellow, uh, we have been very good relationship today. He's the one who was saying, once you heal and recover as a CEO from growth at any cost, trauma, a need for command and control is gone, a need to have a hierarchy titles to hide your salaries you know from uh, people who are truly doing the work is gone but you have to walk that path so what he is doing and that's one of the practices that are not described in any books in the meetings he's asking his people imagine you have daily visual meetings with a lot of kpis and suddenly there is one kpi saying how many lies we are telling today And uh, if you would have that question and that KPI, half of the problems wouldn't even appear because we would step into collective consciousness. Um, so asking that question truly <laughs> normally deletes half of the Gantt chart that was created, first of all, in any projects because of fear, because we needed to please someone at the top and show someone at the top that we are doing something. That's a problem in itself, right? So the future of the workplace is strengthening the immunity and boosting teams' hydration habits there in this industry. And Sven, the CEO of Inolum, Germany, one of his practices is that his guys are hugging trees. And that's no, no nonsense. Uh, every morning he walks and he hugs the trees. He's the man who works with really big scientists, uh, the man who works with a lot of engineers. And he is, yeah, talking about soul alignment decisions and bringing whole human to business rather than, you know, leaving a part of me somewhere else. Uh, because I have a boss who doesn't like my emotions. So because I have a boss who, mm, you know, uh, want to have all the answers. So he's saying, imagine what we could become if we changed I to we, if we treated our clients and suppliers as our team. That's an interesting point. If we establish strategy and execution with clients and suppliers, so he's saying, I simply neglect to look at ourselves as a subcontractors. We are prolonging human lifespan, not just producing quantum chips. Uh, and that's again, the choice, right? So all of these four people basically were showing that the business is not about hierarchy. It's not about those tiny little boxes where each of us at some time back years ago, maybe even now, are sitting because those boxes create separation and we need to create wholeness. So the organization or the system or the impact cannot be created if we work in a linear way. It's time to admit that 
we are in constant, um, you know, move and uh, it's interdependent. And if you're faster, we acknowledge that you're less fake things, fake procedures, any type fake, you know, uh, rules we're going to have in our companies and your less work we will need to do, non-value work. And probably you will need as well less consultants, but that's good. Okay, so the three taboo practices that help them to anchor that impact, um, and that's what they do. I really always believed in them, and it was such a proof uh, to find these people who've been confirming to me and Vilma that they were doing that. Uh, they are brave enough to stand tall and believe in that. So first of all, they've been um, getting rid of their vertical top-down organizational chart files. Any type of files there are in your organization, Excel, not you know just some kind of PDF um, saying how you work as the company, it's a, sorry, it's a fake thing. Your company doesn't work as a vertical organizational chart. It just shows who you have to please in order to keep your cheer kind of holding, but it's, it doesn't reflect the impact and the purpose what we are creating with our system. Second, replace all local efficiency KPIs and if possible, get rid of red and green colors and embed statistical process charts instead. I know that there are a lot of quality people here. I place that word on, on, on uh, purpose because you probably know what statistical process charts are. So we can begin to think, so we can begin to see tendencies rather than you know, red and green, black and white, life is not like that. And as you know, we have to see what's invisible rather than visible and actually embed end-to-end -end purpose-led measures and shared accountability and responsibility, shared, not on one separate person. Uh, there are, you know, very little things one person can do. Um, and embracing shared responsibility and accountability within visible discipline, it's not a rocket science to shift. Um, it takes one, as I said, to start the change. And thirdly, what they do, and especially Sven, he was vividly talking about that opening um, the messy kitchen for your clients and suppliers. So if you've ever done strategic sessions in a conference hall, in some type of rented spa hotel without clients and suppliers, you've been biased in your own mind. And probably all the strategic sessions done in that way, they would end up with the same kind of, um, with the same directional objectives, strategic initiatives. It's only numbers. They will be different. But what we truly want, it is to tap into our impact and bravery and work together, not separate. And yes, there will be conflicts. Yes, there will be you know, things we will not agree on, but once we know our audacious why, that's the path. So remember that you and your business impact is bigger than you think, guys. And we can always choose a structure showing separation or a structure showing togetherness and wholeness. And do you choose to play small and water down the purpose of your business by using a word cascade cascade is you cascade something vertically and you uh, kind of chop it into separate parts so before we cascade make sure that we are linking arms together and truly truly do proper horizontal work because the cascade is gonna happen naturally there is no need to do that people are very very smart in your organizations to take the lead and create the cascade or narrow down those objectives. And Vilma and I, we had to truly overcome ourselves to achieve the extreme excellence world record. And today we redefined the quality of our work uh, to excellence. And that picture tells more than a thousand words. Uh, any type, we, anytime we go to any potential clients, we are not showing silos anymore. We say, we don't know what's gonna happen because your system is unique, is a unique touch points, unique interdependencies. But we know one thing, when you tap into your biggest audacious why and the discipline, there are a lot of things that can be done. 
So today we redefined our mission and we are here to rewrite the history of growth at any cost by inspiring our 1 million leaders and creating case studies and research for the benefit of all mankind. And the greater danger for most of us lies not that we aim too high and we lose, but we aim too low and we hit. And I really believe in that. And Michelangelo said that. And I know that we have another 10 minutes uh, or more. And what I want to do with you guys, it is ask permission to take a moment in time now and truly put any type of work you are doing now, writing an email, writing an SMS, talking to your boss or colleague, and just, if you can, you know, shut down your eyes. If you can take a pen of, um, you know, and a white piece of paper and truly stick here with me, because what we are going to do, it is answer the question. How is the world better off because your company is in it? And you can even twist the question thinking, how is the world better off because you are in it? And if the planet Earth or the future could speak to you now, what would it say? It would probably say, that you are gifted, unapologetically brave. You have all the resourcefulness that is needed to truly aim big and leave a legacy that you are freaking proud of. And as you investigate this, ask yourself, what do you care about so much that is bigger than your fears? What do you care about so much that is bigger than your lifetime? And maybe it's something you are, uh, you know, it's been niggling you for so many years, but it was unearthed because you were so busy kind of, you know, doing what you do. If winning was certain, would you make that bigger? And if you would know that, you know, your, your team couldn't fail, would you do that bigger? And please, as they say, don't look at your competition. It's going to make you smaller. And if things scarce, you'll try to copy. You'll try to look outside in. No. When you want to think about your biggest audacious why, your impact, your mission, your purpose, it comes from inwards. So don't look at the competition or what the market wants. Simply ask yourself, what is the biggest problem in the humanity and the world you are already solving today? You are. And tell that story. And more importantly, reflect that story in your organizational structure, in your ways of working, in your reporting. It just has to be reflected. So it's not two fake kind of worlds. So weave your biggest wife in every thought, decision, and process of your teamwork and business. And um, Henry Ford said once, if I'd asked the customers what they wanted, they had said a faster horse. Please, guys, don't produce a faster horse. Shift your paradigm, shift your industries. That's what you can do when you link arms with your suppliers and clients. You can begin to shift the industries. And this is what we call the holistic thinking and acting. There are thousands of methods and tools. It's not that we lack any of them. You know, we can open up any book. We can just shift, you know, you open lean book, you open quality book, you open iBook, you can exchange then, you know, the titles of these books and it's still going to be about one, the same thing, right? So let's do not... Ask our customers what they want. It's not now the time to do that. It is simply asking yourselves, what is your biggest audacious why in this business and what legacy you want to leave? So thank you. And at the same time, uh, if anyone is interested in the holistic business um, empire, that's how we call it, 
uh, we are right now gathering 25 audaciously thinking, soul aligned CEOs who truly are kind of feel good enough to be very raw, as I say, and naked in their traumas and healing the ego growth from themselves. Um, and we're going to build case studies because we want these case studies to land in Harvard, Oxford, Stanford, and any other high schools. So our, you know, growing sons and daughters, they would not have these traumas and they would think we rather than I. 